In this video, I'm going to attempt to repair a Wells Gardner D9200 arcade monitor. I bought this monitor about 15 years ago, brand new, hooked up to a main machine. And recently, the past couple years, the screen has been shaking. And also, sometimes it would just shut off, and, I, and then it would say no signal on the screen. Here's the monitor in the back of the cabinet. It was a pain to get this thing out of here. Got to remove this metal thing. There's some screws right there. Got to remove these two bolts and the VGA board. And then remove these four bolts. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And there's like a metal subframe that's connected to the circuit board. And you kind of lift it up and spin it so you can get access to the screws. And then I unscrewed the screws and I was able to pull it out. It wouldn't come out with the metal frame attached. It, w it kept hitting the neck. And then once I got the board out, I took the metal subframe out, which came out easy, and I reattached it because the board is kind of flimsy and that metal thing strengthened it for when I'm flipping it over, checking the capacitors and everything. Another thing I do is I take a Sharpie marker and I put a little mark on all the connectors so I can see exactly where everything went. For the connectors on the neck board, I write neck on it so I know that that's where everything goes. I remove the chassis from the monitor and the first thing I do is I look over all the components very carefully. It takes me about 10 minutes or so. Look for anything that's burnt, capacitors that are bulging or leaking. One thing I notice is it has this hot snot glue. And over the years, sometimes this can become conductive and corrosive. So I chip away and try to remove as much as I can. You see I removed all the glue that was covering these jumpers. Could have made a continuity between them. So it's cleared it up. Now I removed that piece of glue that was covering these ends. This capacitor had that hot snot glue totally covering the pins. So I pulled it out and cleaned it up. I'm also going to reseat this chip. It's a socketed chip, so I kind of wiggle it a little bit, pull it out of the socket, and then I push it back in. It'll kind of like clean the metal contacts, give it a nice good connection. I also pull any connectors and then reseat them. Make sure it's got a good, clean connection. Now I'm going to test all the capacitors. This is a 10 microfarad, 50 volt cap. And on the chart, it should read no higher than 1.6. And I'll take my ESR meter and test it. And it's marked right here on the circuit board, capacitor 901. So it's easy to find. And it reads 0.66. So this is a good cap. And I go through and test every single electrolytic cap to see if they're good or bad. And as I test them, if they're good, I'll take a green Sharpie, put a little green dot on top of the capacitor, and then I'll go through and test every single one. Okay, all the capacitors tested good. So now I'm going to take my three times magnification reading glasses and this magnifying glass and closely inspect all the solder joints and look for cracked solder points. Right along these pins, there's a bunch of little cracks and I'm gonna reflow the solder with my soldering iron.
I also found a couple cracked solder joints on the net board. I also reflowed all the pins on the back of the VGA connector. Another thing to look for is scratches. There's kind of a deep gouging scratch and you make sure that it's not cutting the traces. Make sure the traces are still intact. This is a deep scratch but it doesn't look like it harmed anything. Okay when I first turned the monitor on the picture was kind of shifted about an inch away to the left. So I went into the menu and there's this option here called recall that I've never used before. I didn't really know what it was. You press select and hold it down and then it kind of reset. It clicked and the picture went right into the right spot. So if your monitor is giving you problems, try that recall feature before you do anything else. And I just read on the internet that if you hold the down button and the select button, you'll come into a factory menu. And here's the factory menu. It looks pretty much the same really nothing different. Recall looks a little different. Another thing I did that improved the picture quality a lot was I adjusted the focus knob on the flyback. Before it was kind of blurry and fuzzy. Now it's like super sharp. Got it right in the sweet spot. It seems like I fixed it. I've been playing games for about an hour and I haven't had any shakiness. Okay, now it's about three days later. I've run the machine about 10 hours total. I haven't had any shakiness or any problems. So I'm gonna call this one fixed. It, was, it might have been a crack solder joint or a loose cable connection. It also could have just been that factory recall thing that I pressed in the menu. But it seems like everything's good. Thanks for watching. This cabinet was built completely from scratch. I bought the wood and everything. It's got a real Discs of Tron spinner that moves up and down. It's got an eight way joystick, a real Tron joystick, discs of Tron, some buttons, keyboard, mouse. It's got just a personal computer and some speakers. One of my favorite games is Tube Panic. It's got this cool spinning effect. Here's Discs of Tron. Here's original Tron from 1982. You'll notice my button setup is for Vanguard. Up, down, left, right. Tron, Voyage, 